and welcome back. Each week, the Staten Island News Center is proud to bring you Island Insight. This gives island residents the opportunity to learn about historical events or areas on Staten Island, including arts, literature, culture, economics, and environment significant to the island. This week, Wayne Miller visits the 15th annual Harmony Street Fair, a celebration of multiculturalism in our borough. The usual serenity of the Snug Harbor Cultural Center was shattered this weekend as 15,000 people thronged the 83-acre site for the 15th annual Harmony Fair. When we first started this event some 15 years ago, the purpose was to bring all the ethnic groups, all the religious groups, all of the groups together on Staten Island for one purpose and one purpose only, to show to you that we have more in common than we have differences. And if we come together and work together and understand each other better, we will have a better borough and a better life. Because after all, we all are family. I just went around to a lot of the uh, different booths and many of the uh, people I know from uh, their ambassadors and council general. And I'm really happy to see this. For its entire history, the ethnic food offerings have been an important part of the Harmony Fair, many vendors featuring exotic ingredients. Now this, is, this is that hot sauce that they said is very hot and it's supposed to help your appetite along. Let's see. That's hot. The entertainment included music, dance, and a martial arts demonstration by the world's youngest black belt. And a high energy clown named Chili Pepper. From the back of a rickshaw. Here at the 15th Annual Harmony Street Fair, I'm Wayne Miller for the Staten Island News. Staten Island Snug Harbor Cultural Center began a year-long celebration of its 25th anniversary with this year's Neptune Ball. Wayne Miller stopped by and filed this report for tonight's Island Insight. This year marks two very important anniversaries. It's the 25th anniversary of Snug Harbor Cultural Center and the 200th anniversary of Sailor Snug Harbor. To have gone from uh, a, a center which had been basically abandoned and um, we recreated it into something completely different and it is a thriving center today. The honorary host for the evening was legendary actress Celeste Holm. Celeste is an amazingly accomplished actress on the film, stage, and on television as well. Honored at this year's ball with prominent Staten Islanders. Louise Diamond is one of those individuals that gets involved and when she gets involved you can be assured it's going to be a success. I recall running a fundraiser with Elise, her and I, for Snug Harbor. We were in a fundraiser on the Staten Island Ferry and the purpose of that fundraiser was to raise enough of money to pay for fuel because this place couldn't even heat. We didn't have enough of money to stop the rain from coming in. But Alan Wiseglass, the Wiseglass name on Staten Island is one that everyone recognizes and Alan keeps the tradition of the Wiseglass family. Give back to the community. Give back to the community. And that's Alan Wiseglass. So many organizations have benefited from Alan Wiseglass's generosity. Before dinner, opera legend and Neptune Award honoree Roberta Peters brought the crowd to their feet with a very special performance. to tell you the acoustics here are so sensational. I could not get over it. I hate to sing with mics and tonight I did not have to sing with a mic and I knew that my voice went way to the back of the auditorium. From the stage of the music hall at Snug Harbor, I'm Wayne Miller for Staten Island News Center. Con Edison is proud to sponsor another season of Cranial Crunch, the game Staten Islanders just can't get enough of. California. The Wizard of Oz. London. Michael. 5,000. No. You mo? 500. 500 is the right answer. Stay tuned to Channel 17 for the best in local programming. Cranial Crunch, brought to you by Time Warner Cable and Con Edison.
In this week's Island Insight, Wayne Miller had the chance to see literary history come alive at the Snug Harbor Cultural Center. I'm on the grounds of the Snug Harbor Cultural Center, outside Veterans Memorial Hall, where Gerald Charles Dickens, the great-great-grandson of Charles Dickens, is preparing his one-man staging of A Christmas Carol. Before performing to sold-out houses and standing ovations, Gerald Charles Dickens took a moment to reflect on his humble beginnings and his first acting role. It, it was at my school, uh, and the, the, the school was doing a... A, a, a nativity play. So they hit upon the idea of um, telling the nativity story from the point of view of all the animals in the stable looking in at the scene. So you still had the Mary, Joseph, the three kings, the shepherds, and the little baby Jesus, but we, we, we all looked in and all the animals. So we were all cast as animals, and I was cast for some unknown reason as, as a rooster. Of course, I, I was about ten times bigger than all the cows and all the donkeys and everything else in the stable, so the, this rooster marched in, boom, boom, and that the cow was absolutely terrified. She burst into tears. <laughs> so, and, and, and that day, I thought, this is the life. If I can march about on stage and everyone looks at me, then <laughs> this is the life for me. But from that first time at school, I just got myself involved in every branch of theatre I could, community theatre, school theatre, and it kind of built there through semi-professional into professional. Um, really regular staged company productions, um, did a bit of directing as well, which I actually enjoy a great deal. Um, j just anything to be part of the theatre. And Dickens served his ancestors well, concluding a 40-day, 17-city tour of the United States with his only New York appearance before heading home to his family in England. God bless us, every one. Have a very Merry Christmas. On tonight's Island Insight, Wayne Miller went on a quest seeking new culture and found cultures of barley, malt, and yeast in a business that's making a comeback on Staten Island. Steps away from the light industry here in Mariners Harbor on Staten Island is a business that's come back after 40 years. Following the tradition of such local brewing legends as Bechtel and Rubson and Horman, the Old World Brewing Company is brewing and bottling beer right here on Staten Island. What we make here is as good as any way you can get in the world. Sal Pinocchio and his staff took us for an in-depth look at the process of making beer. When people say malt, they generally mean malted barley. The main difference in, in the various types is the amount of roasting that goes into them. Uh, all of the, the, the malts are dried at the end of the malting process, and some of them are roasted, and some of them are roasted very intensely, up to the point of coffee beans. These two vessels have multi-uses. As you see, it says mash and brew kettle. The first stage here is the mash. All that grain is brought into here, about 1,200 pounds. A certain amount of water is added. Yeah. Do the hops get added? Automatically, it is a guy actually. Well, there, there is no automatic. This is all handcrafted. Don't believe the commercials of some of the larger craft brewers. Everything here is done by hand. What separates the solids are in the middle, and the clear liquid comes out via one of the pumps and goes through this heat exchanger. Well, primary fermentation is at a warmer temperature in the range of the 60 degrees, and afterwards the yeast is drained off and the temperature is lowered down into the 30 to 40 degree range. It's an English strain of. Um, extra special bitter yeast. Um, it's yeast, uh, basically they metabolize sugar during primary fermentation. We oxygenate the wort, which is the young beer. Um, the yeast can use the oxygen and the sugar to build energy and replicate, and after the oxygen is used up, it produces ethanol and CO2. So that's where your alcohol comes from and your carbonation in the beer. Even though we're on the first floor, this is the cellar of any brewery. Wherever the tanks are, you're in the cellar. We are using the best ingredients, the best water that you can get anywhere in the world is right here. I think this was my calling, to make really good beer. Let's stand out and find out what beer is all about. If you haven't tried real beer, you haven't tried the uh, Carver Ale. From inside the cold room at the Old World Brewing Company here on Staten Island, I'm Wayne Miller for the Staten Island News Center. How come Wayne didn't bring any of that back for us? Right. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. All right, we'll be right back. Vehicle brokerage has...